Hello, dog lovers. My name is Saru. I'm a dog trainer, also coach dog owners. In this channel, we focus on training dogs without the use of treats, food, aversive tools, uh, force or domination or being alpha. And in this video, we are going to talk about dogs. I'm going to answer your questions. And also uh, today I'm introducing you or kind of uh, encouraging you to use Super Chat. Super Chat is a, an option that is available for you to support the channel. So if you want your question to be answered fast, super fast, use the option of Super Chat. And to, to those who support the channel, over $50 will have a chance to win a free 30 minute consultation with me as well. So take advantage of that. And if you wanna also win a 30 minute free consultation se session with me, uh, just use the free, uh, super chat option. You can see it in your, uh, on your um, beside the video on the right, side i believe it is so welcome to the show and uh, if you have any questions uh, if you want to an get answered uh, type it in in the chat area if you want your question to be answered right away use the super chat option and uh, today i'm going to answer start the video and start today's live show with answering a question of the week that i have received and by the way, whoever uh, supports the channel over $50 will get this. And we're going to celebrate uh, the, the support. So the question of the week, let me share the screen. So this is the question of the week. And I'm going to zoom it in a little bit so you can see it better. So it's a long question. I'm going to read it. I'm going to talk about this because I think it's one of the important questions that uh, I received last week. And I want to explain a little bit. Uh, it's something that I think it's uh, important and many dog owners are dealing with the situation like this, but let's get started. So it's from Jonathan Hurley. Is asking, I have a mixed breed, about 23 pounds, now four years old, and we have had since six to seven weeks old. Great dog, well behaved. Once outside of our home, I haven't trained him to come when I call almost, but I don't walk outside my fence area very, mu very much. He gets plenty of exercise on our property. So one week ago, my wife's sister got a sweet little bitty a uh, five weeks old puppy brought it home to her parents' home that had three big dogs. One big, do one of the dogs bit the entire head of the puppy, almost killed it. So her sister convinces her to bring her home to our place. With our four year old me uh, met the tiny puppy, he just went rigid with fear, then began shaking, avoids the puppy at all costs. He can even he can't even be in the same be on the on my lap, licking my hand. Then I can go pet the puppy, come back, and when he smells my hand, jumps off and runs away. After a while he will return to me, but it's a it's been a week and he still doesn't want to interact with the little girl. It's better now, but it seems the little puppy may be blind now in one eye because of that at attack and may have suffered brain damage as well. I hope not, but you never know. I just know in the end they will be fine, but for now I just ignored his negative behavior, but I also show affection for the new puppy. Am I doing this good way? Will it turn out all right? So this is the situation, so I wanted uh, to kind of explain uh, and answer this question. In the, it, it's hard to answer questions like this in writing. So I've invited Jonathan to join us today. Uh, if, you, I, if you are live, so here is the answer. And if you are watching this on a rerun, replay, then here we go. 
So basically the situation is that uh, this Jonathan has a dog who's four years old and doesn't walk the dog, doesn't walk his dog outside of the property. Uh, just not many often goes for a walk, just exercises the dog inside the property in the fenced area. And they brought a puppy inside in the house who's been attacked by a big dog. And the the dog, uh, his Jonathan's dog now is kind of scared and is reactive to this dog, to this puppy. So what to do? The, the problem is, first of all, uh, let's deal with Jonathan's dog. Jonathan's dog is not going for enough walk. So when Jonathan gives me this uh, question and in, during this question, I figure out, okay, the dog is not being walked outside. So that means it's not being socialized properly. So that's not problem number one. So Jonathan's uh, dog, which is a mixed breed and is four years old, is not being walked enough. That means it's not being socialized enough. So when a dog is not social enough, what happens when you bring a puppy or any dog or anything in the house, this dog gets stressed, gets anxious, gets uh, overwhelmed. So this is the reason why he, Jonathan's dog is not accepting the puppy and is, over, uh, is not, uh, is being afraid of the puppy in a way. So a four-year-old is being afraid of puppy. I doubt that he's being afraid. It's just, I think he's being overwhelmed. And the reason for that is because again, your Jonathan's dog is not social enough. So we have to work on um, improving the social skills of the mixed breed who's four-year-old, right? So that number, that's number one. Number two, this puppy who's been attacked by big dogs now has a trauma in, in its uh, mind and brain and uh, in its emotional, um, emotionally is, kind of scared of dogs could be now how do you work on this puppy is you introduce it to dogs who are really good dogs instead of any dog you have to be really careful about introducing this puppy to good dogs so there is no way and there's no chance that this dog this puppy is going to experience another negative experience with dogs so we want to make sure that the experiences that from now on is getting is positive and is good and is not being um, emotionally, physically, and also mentally being uh, damaged or being negative. So a lot of, it's a lot of work now. So Jonathan has a lot of work to do because has to work on his own dog and has to work on the puppy. So it's a lot of work. Uh, I definitely suggest Jonathan to start working with a trainer or take an online course like such as mine that I have online course, start educating yourself, learn what to do and how to do and how to deal with your dog, first of all, in order to help another dog. If you can't help your own dog, you won't be able to help other dogs. So it's a lot of, uh, you got a lot in your plate, so you have to work a lot harder and therefore you're gonna have a lot of challenges. So that's the, the basically the answer to this question. So I'm gonna start answering your question, but if you would like to support the channel, if you are seeing the content and you, that you're getting and in this channel, in this live show, in this uh, overall, every week that I come to on the channel live and helping you out, and also you're seeing and the content that I'm providing is benefiting you, I would love you to support the channel by using the super chat option. Whoever uh, supports the channel over $50 gets a, a free 30 minute consultation session with me. And if you want your question to be answered super fast, also go ahead and support the channel uh, and uh, I will uh, I will read and answer your question right away, and you may also get a, a gift from me. So you never know. So let's get started by answering the questions. Uh, Life of Duffy 
has a question. I have a lap pit and he's always biting on his bed and barking at me when I discipline him for it. He thinks I'm playing. What can I do? So first of all, the reason uh, your lap pit is biting the bed is because it's lacking uh, mental and physical stimulation. When a puppy or a dog is behaving that way, that is a sign that that dog is stressed and anxious, right? So you need to help that dog to uh, not to be. That's a sign that your dog is anxious. That's a signal to you that your dog is anxious, stressed, is not getting enough um, mental and physical stimulation, therefore is, getting, is doing that behavior. Now, when you discipline a dog or a puppy uh, at the stage that they are stressed and anxious, uh, it doesn't sit well because they are stressed. Imagine if you're stressed. Imagine your mom or dad pissed you off for some reason, right? And you're stressed and they come on, uh, you know, or friends, whatever happens, something happened to you and you're stressed or anxious, right? And then your mom and dad come and say, you know what, we're going to, we want to talk to you and we want to discipline you. We want to help you and all that. And because you're stressed, you don't want to deal with that, with them, right? You get even more anxious, more stressed, more, actually you become more angry and, and it becomes a negative environment. Uh, nobody's helping, nobody, uh, nobody's getting benefits. The reason for that is because first of all, you're stressed right? Your dog is stressed. You have to deal with that issue first. Second of all, you have to teach, you have to learn and teach your dog what uh, correction is, what discipline is, and how to do it. There's a right way of disciplining a dog, and there is a wrong way of disciplining a dog. When you do it the wrong way, they read, read it the wrong way and they uh, respond to it the wrong way. The best way that you can um, discipline a dog is in a form of teaching the dog that this is what I want you to do, this is what, when I want you to do. So what I mean by that is you have to teach a cue word to your dog that your dog learns that this is the, the keyword that I'm getting, uh, that it means um, I need to stop. So I have a video which is called how to uh, con uh, correct or punish dogs, right? Uh, the positive form of way. So that's the video that I'm going to share with you. Um, you can simply uh, watch this video and learn how to do it. So. I'm going to name it uh, Disciplining Dogs. Okay, Disciplining Dogs. Uh, I'm going to share the video in the chat area. Go ahead and watch it uh, and learn how to actually cue it so your dog can learn and how to respond to that cue of being disciplined or corrected. That's the easiest way to actually communicate Okay, to your dog. <clears throat> um, Taylor, when I keep my beagle puppy in his crate, he starts barking and shaking and howling. So the reason that happens is because probably you're using the, the crate as a punishment, as a jail as something that your dog, your beagle has done something and you're putting it there, it shouldn't be considered as a, as a place that you're punishing your, your beagle. It has to be a place that you're asking your beagle to have a break. Uh, and also, if you haven't uh, provided your dogs, your beagles, daily five essential needs, let me remind you again of these. If 
you haven't provided your dogs daily five essential needs, which are exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection, your dog, your beagle is not going to be happy to go in a crate. Crate is a place that it's, it's somewhere that you have provided your beagle all these th tasks and you, you have exercised your beagle, you have done some training, daily training, you have, your beagle has got some socialization, you provided care, food and all that, you shared affection, you're, now your, your beagle is happy and satisfied, right? Now it's ready to go in the crate. But if you don't provide these, and you miss any of these, your beagle is going to have a hard time going in a crate and or even staying in a crate. Because if you don't provide all these, it causes them to have stress and anxiety and barking, shaking and howling. All these are all again signs of or signals of a dog who's stressed and anxious because they haven't received their daily five essential needs. So focus on providing your dogs daily five essential needs. What are, how do you do it? You go to my channel and watch my videos, learn how to provide them, when to provide them, how much to provide them, and uh, how to provide them on daily basis every day that is doable for a human being to provide this for their dog. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, Jennifer Johnson is here. Uh, my eight weeks old Chweeny won't pee outside during the day. She'll stay out there for a, as long as an hour and come in and pee within minutes. She does pull outside. How do I get her to pee outside? So this is a very common problem, common issue actually. Um, so the reason that happens is because uh, your dog is not feeling confident to do its business outside. Uh, and the reason for that is there are several reasons. One, probably you didn't house train your dog properly. So take some time to house train your dog. Um, what that means is for 24 hours, 48 hours, you take your dog every two hours and let it do its business outside. If it doesn't bring it in, you either have it on a leash or in a crate or in a con confined environment so it doesn't uh, have the opportunity to pee inside. You're not giving the chance or opportunity for that dog uh, to uh, do its business inside. You're allowing, you're saying, you know, uh, you need to do it outside, especially at eight weeks old, you know, you need to take it every two hours, maybe even less than that, maybe an hour and a half, two hours, it's a good time. But your eye, the puppy is either <clears throat> doing its business outside or not doing it inside. That's the concept that you want to think about, okay? So what I'll do also, I'll share with you a video that you can watch and learn. Um, there we go. This is the one. So you can learn this. So how to potty train. So potty, you have to potty train your puppy. Okay. So learn how to potty train your dog. So in this video, I, I will teach you. So it's in the chat area. Go ahead and watch that video. Life of Duffy says, my former aggressive right now, and I'm trying to lessen it and get him better. What do I do? Uh, well, interesting question as well. Uh, this is very common misunderstanding of dog owners. They, they think that their four months old dog is aggressive. It's not that they're aggressive. They're just stressed. And when they are stressed, that's how they communicate to you. That's how they're telling you that I'm stressed. The reason you're, they're stressed is because they have a boring life. That's because you're not providing your four months old pities, uh, lap pit, uh, daily five essential. Okay. Um, let me see if I can 
this is better. Okay, so you need to provide your dog's daily five essential needs. So those are exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection. So you have to provide those so your dog is going to be health, uh, healthy and happy and not stressed. If you don't provide these five essential needs, you're going to have a puppy who's going to be stressed and is going to keep telling you and reminding you that I'm stressed. I'm not getting my daily essential needs. All I'm getting is probably, all I'm getting is exercise, uh, maybe a lot of exercise. Maybe I'm getting a lot of training. And maybe I'm getting a lot of socialization, but I'm not getting enough uh, exercise. So the thing is that you're not providing all these in this order, first of all, or you're providing one or another a lot more than the other or less than other. So what happens is uh, you're, you're creating an unbalanced environment for your puppy or your dog to grow up. So if you don't provide enough exercise or enough training, especially a four months old needs a lot of training, you need to provide socialization and care and also affection. But the affection is the last thing that you need to provide. As a puppy owner, I know we melt, we fall in love with our puppies and we start focusing only on affection, right? Affection and maybe care. That's the only thing we start focusing on. Just because it's a four month puppy, looks cute and all that, we probably focus on those two. But we forget that we need to provide proper amount of exercise, daily training and socialization as well. And then provide care and affection. Affection is the last thing that you need to provide for your puppy. Do this and you'll see that your dog is going to be less aggressive. Uh, Shri Devi, Shri Devi, how can I make my lab listen to me without treats? Well, you're in the, at, in the right channel. This is the channel that we focus on training dogs without the use of treats, food, aversive tools, force or domination. So the way you get a lab to listen to you is, first of all, remove the idea from your mind and your head that you need to use treats. Just think that the world is out of treats. We don't have treats anymore. What would you do? Okay. If you have a hard time figuring what would you do if the world was out of treats, how do I connect with my dog, how do I train my dog is using play and praise. These are two things that are free and available all the time. If the word was didn't have any treats, I can still play with my dog. I can still praise my dog. Use those two. And those two are the most powerful, most natural and most effective forms of training dogs. So what you want to do is I'm going to share the screen. So you're going to go to my channel. Here's my channel, right? You're going to go to playlist, okay? And you're going to select, there are several video series. So this one says how to train beagles without using treats. You can use the same. It doesn't have to be only beagles. This one is specifically to beagles, but labs, it applies to labs, it applies to golden retrievers, it applies to pit bulls, whatever it is. This is the playlist that you're going to watch. The other playlist that I want you to watch is play and praise reward dog training system. Watch these videos as well. I have another video playlist. It's called Dog Training Without the Use of Treats or Food. So I have several playlists, several video series that you can go and watch. So again, go to my channel, go to playlist and choose those, those videos and watch those videos and learn how to train your dog without the treats. Uh, Ta Ta Tavlin is saying hi. Thank you for being here, Tavlin. Uh, just a reminder, again, if you like to support the channel, if you 
like what you're seeing uh, if you are uh, enjoying the content that I'm providing for you in this channel make sure to support the channel so I can provide and produce more content quality content like this by using the super chat super chat is option and I'm introducing it today and hopefully we can start using it every week and uh, start supporting the channel in a way that it will help me to produce more quality content for you. So feel free to use the super chat option. Where was I? And Arjun is here. Arjun, we had a, a free 30, uh, 30 minute session, uh, uh, consultation session. Hopefully everything is going well. Thank you for being here and good to see you as well. Um, Shirid is saying hello. Thank you for being. Um, okay, I answered that. Rahul, when to start training a beagle puppy? What are some good commands to start with and what are some good homemade treats? All right, few good questions. Um, when to start a beagle puppy train to start training a beagle puppy right now today is the day that you start training you don't wait you just start right so there is a steps there are steps that you need to take to start training your beagle puppy so for a beagle puppy you do beagle puppy training uh content uh up to four uh, you start you know up to four to six months what you're doing is you're focusing on training your puppy uh, beagle puppy content, which is house training, a little bit of leash training, a little bit of games, a little bit of introduction, maybe just working on introducing the sit, stay calm, and that's about it. Four months and older, four to six months and older, you start formal training which is basic obedience, which is you're going into providing learning, uh, sit, stay calm, heel, down, and stand. These are the formal training, basic obedience training. You start basic obedience and also proper leash training as well. So those are the things that you're gonna do. Uh, and what are good homemade treats? Um, although I don't suggest to use treats to uh, train your puppy, I do have um, a video uh, that I use. Uh, I, I show you how to make homemade treats. Let me see if I can get it. There we go. So this is the video that I'm going to share it in In the chat area, homemade treats. Um, there's the recipe and how you can make treats that are homemade, healthy, and uh, good, safe as well. So although I don't recommend using treats to train dogs, but I do give treats to my dog for no reason, just, just because. So hopefully that helps. So our journey is saying, change five, uh, Figo's uh, food sorrow, making progress. Great. Got to hear, good to hear. One of the reasons I uh, always suggest to change your dog's uh, food or diet is because we want to make sure that your dog is getting fresh food, fresh, healthy food. Se second of all, we want to make sure that the, the food that your puppy or your dog is eating is helping it to grow healthy and be um, not have any short-term and long-term health issues. When you feed kibble or dry food, you are causing uh, your dog to develop short and long-term health issues. They're not, they're processed, highly processed food. They have a whole bunch of garbage, they're dry. They don't have any moisture or nutrients in it. All the nutrients have been killed during the processing of the kibble or dry food 
uh, and they're dead, highly cooked. So there's no benefit in feeding kibble or dry food. But when you feed fresh food, homemade or raw diet, uh, what happens is not only you're helping your dog to live a healthy and happy long life, studies have shown if we change a dog's diet to fresh food, we're adding four more years to, to their lives. Um, four additional years to their lives. Imagine that if your dog is supposed to live 12 years, you're going to help it to live 16 years of healthy life. That's amazing. Imagine, don't we want our dogs to live a healthy, long life? That's what you can do. Not only that, but also it helps to, um, to have problems with uh, potty training or house training your dog. It, reduces the amount of stool that comes out of their system. Also, it forces them, it, it doesn't force them to drink a lot of water. Therefore, they're not going to have a lot of accidents. So it, it's a lot of good stuff when you change um, the diet. Uh, Rahul, her collar belt is yeah. loose and the leash keeps getting tangled in her legs. Can I tighten the collar belt or can I use a harness belt for a 65 days old puppy? Yeah, definitely. I do suggest for puppies to use harness until they're old enough and strong enough that they can tolerate, uh, let's say, collar or something. Harness is a good stepping in um, method to step in to, you know, using the leash. Um, and once the dog learns how to walk properly and how, what to do and what not to do, you can switch to uh, uh, collar. So my 65 days old beagle stomach gets bulged after a meal and it's not returning to its previous size. Is this normal or should I take her to a vet? Uh, that's normal. In, overall, yes, it does get, it's so cute and sweet and funny as actually, but that is normal. It is normal. Don't worry. Uh, eat chew bones and soft calcium bones. Yeah, those are good. Those are very good things. Yes, you're doing everything good. Uh, Tabeline, my beagle puppy always barks and shout when he's being put in his crate. Um, so again, the reason is doing that. Did I answer this question? Uh, no, I think I didn't. Um, I didn't. So the reason that happens is because, again, you're not providing your puppies, bigger puppies, daily five essential needs. Focus on providing all these five things on a daily basis, and you'll see that uh, it's going to be more willing to go in a crate. So what I mean by this, again, let me explain a little bit more. So when you get up in the morning, you don't, what is the first thing that you do? You start sharing affection with your dog. Right? That's the first thing. Good morning, sweetie pie. Hi, how you doing, my cutie? You do that, and then you start carrying. You say, oh, you want breakfast? Let's have breakfast. Okay, that's it. Let's go. Let's do your business. Let's play. Do you see what I'm, where I'm going? It's all messed up. It's all the wrong way, right? Uh, no training happens, no proper socialization. We started the day with affection, which is the wrong way of starting the day. The day should start with exercise, going for a walk, letting it out in the yard, things like that. And it has to continue with some training, even puppies. You have to continue on training, start training, provide some socialization, introduce the neighbors, introduce neighbor's cat, neighbor's dog, cars, um, stores, buses, uh, lawn mowers, things like that. And then introduce the breakfast or provide breakfast and then share affection. If you, <clears throat> if you do this in this order, your beagle puppy is going to be more willing to go in the crate. So 
for example, myself that I have Annie, <coughs> I make sure that she has all this, right? It's provide I'm providing all this for my Annie, right? So when when my Annie is happy and satisfied, what happens is I have the crate door open. She goes in it on her own, especially in the evenings, at nights, uh, around nine nine thirty. She says, good night, bye-bye, I'm going to bed, see you tomorrow. So she's done. She goes in a crate on her own. All I have to do is close the gate, crate, and that's it. That's Annie. So that's, uh, let me see. that's Annie, right? So that's my newly adopted puppy, Annie. So I provide these five essentials for my puppy, right? So at during the day, even during the day when I'm providing all this in the morning, at lunchtime when I go to lunch area and I want to have a lunch, right? I have a crate there. I'm sitting to have my lunch. She just automatically goes in the crate. I have a crate there too. So she goes in the crate. She's happy to go in there because she has had her five daily essential needs of the morning portion, right? She's happy and she goes in there. She sleeps. For a couple of hours, a couple of hours later, I take her out for a walk, training, socialization, and then it's uh, dinner time, and then I share affection, uh, and then at the end of the day, around 8.30, 9.30, she says, good night, she goes in the crate. Provide your dogs or puppies daily five essential needs. It's very important for you to focus on that. Give me some tips for potty training my beagle puppy. Uh, if you need specific uh, answer to certain questions, you can either um, support the channel, right? Uh, by, uh, you know, s uh, providing, you know, a $50 over and you get a free 30 minute consultation with me uh, where you can talk to me and get all the information that you need. Within half an hour, we'll figure out all the solution that you need. So over Super Chat supporters, over $50 will win a free 30 minute consultation with me. If you have any specific question that you want me to answer. Um, As you said in your video, puppy is leashed, but still tends to go and chew on the furniture and stuff after a year when it's time to not have. Yeah, so I would say, yes, you need to support the channel because you have tons of questions. Um, I'd love to help you, but you can win a, a, a 30 minute session, consultation session. All you have to do is let me uh, support the channel I'll send you information. You'll send me an email if uh, I'll let you know how to send me an email. I'll send you the information. Uh, Shuri Devi is saying how to calm my puppy while I hold her collar. Hmm. Not sure I understand what you mean. How to calm my puppy while I hold her collar. Why are you holding her collar? Uh, if you mean that you're putting your puppy on a collar and a leash and your puppy is excited, um, if that's what's happening, what I want you to do is um, play with your puppy for about 10, 15 minutes before you put the leash on. What you want to do, you want to bring the energy from here, energy level from there to here. So it's a little bit calmer. So without having the leash on. So have a play session for five, 10, 15 minutes to bring that energy level down and then put the collar and the uh, leash on. That will bring the energy level down. Uh, Tantera, he says, I have a beagle, he's four months old. We've been working on training without treats on a long lead for, from your beagle training videos, great. But he only listens sometimes, any way to get him to listen always. So you have a four month old beagle, 
uh, you've been working on without treats on a long lead, but he only listens. So, so I think one of the mistakes that you made was at four months old, you still don't introduce long leash. You introduce short leash. Short leash means six foot leash. So make the leash short. Okay, instead of long leash, make the leash short. What that means is you're making the connection more intimate and more, much more closer. So you want to make sure that um, your puppy is always within six foot of distance from you, not long leash. That's too much, too soon to introduce long leash at this age. Long leash usually is introduced at probably six months or eight months and older and or when you have done the puppy training or and also the basic obedience then you start introducing the long leash long leash is for later at the moment you're going to have to work on short leash four months old it's too early to work on a long leash <clears throat> stick with a six foot leash and um I think you're gonna have better results. Uh, the, I think you went too fast too soon. So that's the problem. Um, where are we? Let me figure out where are we. Yeah, Rahul, you have many questions. So make sure to support the channel and you'll get a chance to have a one-on-one -on -one session with me and I'll answer all your questions. Uh, Jackie, my puppy just turned a year old and keeps tearing up things. For example, pillows, couch, couch cushions, blankets, etc. How do I stop this behavior? A year old and keeps tearing up things, pillows, couch cushions, blankets, etc. Et so if it's a year old and it's still doing things like that, that means you're not, your dog is bored and it's, not getting, uh, you know, again, one of, again, I have to remind you this. You're not providing your dog's daily five essential needs. These are clear signs of a dog who's, who's not getting its daily five essential needs. If a dog is not happy, you, you see, here's the, the idea. For example, if you want to be happy, if you want to have a good life, if you want to have a good day, if you want to be happy for the day or every day, you want to make sure that you are happy, what do you do? You provide things that makes you happy. You get up in the morning. If you're a coffee lover, for example, you drink coffee. Uh, if you're a tea lover, you start drinking tea. You have your breakfast. You have your nice, uh, decent clothing, right? You wear that. Uh, you have your cell phone, you have your laptop or your computer, you watch your favorite TV, you have your favorite uh, show, you watch your favorite show, you drive your car go here and there or ride a bike, you do things that makes you happy, right? If, you're, if you do things and you provide things that makes you happy, you are happy and you are not going to be causing problems for your family, for your parents, for your society, for your community, for your uh, for the world. You're not going to be causing issues, problems. The reason, for instance, we have all these problems in our society, in our world, is because we're not providing what our society really needs. Although, you know, most countries and most societies are trying to provide the best thing for their society, but we still are not able to provide this. Even though we think we are providing the best for our dogs, for instance, we're still not providing the best or what they really need. We're mostly focused on what we need for ourselves and we provide those for ourselves, hoping that our dogs are going to be happy with what we provided for ourselves. What I mean by that is ourselves, we feel like we need affection and we need to share affection with our dogs. 
Therefore, our dogs should love us, should be happy with us. Just because we are sharing affection, because we need affection as a society, as a human being, we all need affection. So therefore, we think affection is the ideal thing to use and give to our dogs as well. So we share affection. We provide good care for our dogs, hoping that, okay, if I share affection and share care for my dog, then my dog is going to love me, is going to be happy with me, is going to fall in love with me. And then this happens. Even a year old, it's still not uh, happy with its life. So therefore, what happens is uh, your dog is not happy. Right? Because you're just focused on providing affection and care. You're forgetting that you need to provide other stuff as well for your dog. So as I said, as you want to be happy, you need to have your cell phone. You need to have your uh, car, your laptop, your favorite TV show, your wine, your this and that, that to be happy. Right? And don't focus only on you. Focus on what is it that makes my dog happy. All, most dog trainers, most dog specialists, they will tell you exercise. Just provide exercise and that's it. A little bit of training also is good. No. I have learned this concept a long time ago that because we are only focused on exercise and training, uh, maybe a little bit of exercise and care and affection, that's the formula that for disaster. Okay, so th that is why we have dogs who have behavioral issues. In general, in our society, the reason we have dogs with behavioral issues, kids with behavioral issues, adults with behavioral issues, because we are not providing their daily needs proper amount of daily needs. This applies to humans and dogs as well. So dogs are not getting proper amount of daily essential needs of their life. So they don't, they're not happy. And they're, if they're not happy, they won't uh, function properly. They don't, they don't, they're not going to be a positive, uh, a good family member. They're going to cause damage to your home, damage to your life, damage to your society, right? So most dogs are not getting their daily five essential needs, which are exercise, training, socialization, care, and then affection, and it has to be provided in this order not the other way around or not just one or two of these. You have to provide all these things. Then you're going to see if you provide it for a week, two weeks, three weeks, you're going to see a different dog because now your dog is getting everything that it needs. Therefore, it has no reason to complain. The reason your dog is chewing on the cushion couch cushions and blankets and tearing up all those, peeing in the house, barking at the neighbor, digging a hole in the yard, not listening to you. All these are because you're not providing your dog's daily five essential needs. Hopefully that makes sense. So we have a question from Fiona James, how do you get over you being stressed when cutting, when cutting your angry? Uh, when cutting, cutting your angry dog? When you cut, okay, I think I understand what the question is. So, your dog has done something and it has pissed you off, I think. And how do you get over <laughs> that situation? So one of the things that you have to remember is that your dog 
is not doing things to piss you off. It's not planning to make do things or come up with a list of to do things to piss you off. The reason it's doing that is because it's stress. If your dog is doing anything that sounds like and feels like and it seems like bad behavior and it's annoying you and it's stressing you and it's making you angry, it's a signal, it's a sign that your dog is stressed. You're not providing your dog's daily five essential needs, so your dog gets anxious and stressed and therefore it uh, behaves that way. And then it makes you to become angry and anxious because again, as a human being, we are not providing our dog's daily five essential needs. I want you to remember and memorize this. We're not providing our dog's daily five essential needs. This is a key word and this is the key that you need to learn and understand that if you don't provide these things for your dog, you're going to have a dog who's going to be stressed and it's going to cause stress in you as well, okay? Life of Duffy says, Rahul, my God, let other people ask. <laughs> yes. Uh, Raul, yes. If you need, uh, I, I appreciate if you could only ask, ask one question. Uh, uh, and if you need extra help and extra uh, consultation, uh, contact me and, you know, we'll come up with a plan. I can help you in private session. Uh, you know, or I can have a, a 30 minute free session and help you. It's just that seems like you have a lot of questions and you need one on one <laughs> and consultation and training. So I have that service available. If you want to use that, go to my website, which is called sorrowdogtraining.com. You can see it over there, sorrowdogtraining.com. Easy website, go and choose private training or virtual, virtual training or choose one of my online courses. Get started to learn what to do and what not to do because you seem like you, are, you need a lot of help. And uh, this session is not only for you. I can't just help you and I need to help others. And if a session like this won't help you even, right? You need one-on-one -on -one help. Arjun is asking, I'm playing fetch game with my dog. He does respond, but he does growl at times. He also has the habit of biting my hand when playing with him. With the help of a chew toy, are these signs of aggression? It's not sign of aggression. The puppies, they don't have aggression. One of the things that you have to understand also is Puppies haven't developed the behaviors of an adult dog yet. They're still in the progress of learning behaviors and developing those. You can either help them to develop or you can help them not to develop those be unwanted behaviors. Aggression is something that it's a result of many, many, many repeated uh, stressed, stressful uh, in situations and experiences. So what I mean by that is just think of it. I can't come up with a, a movie. I, I don't know if I've, I've seen a movie or something like that. So what was happening was there was a person I remember a movie, I can't remember exactly the storyline and I can't remember what it was called, but there was what happened is there was a kid who was growing up. It was story of a kid who was growing up who the parents uh, separated and then he went and lived in an orphan. It's a very common story anyways, orphan house. And uh, the orphan parents were uh, aggress uh abusive to him and he went and stayed with kids and friends who, you know, he fell into bad uh, 
with bad hang up with bad people and got bad experiences uh, there was a, a friend who got killed and parents started um, connect contacting him and he one of the parents died and then he had to run away from somewhere it went through all these uh, bad experiences throughout his life uh, until he got to, I don't know, 25, 30 years old, and he got stressed to the point that all these things affected him to become a, a, a crazy lunatic man that started going and uh, killing people for no reason, right? So what I mean by that is it's, it's a repeated behaviors that starts, you know, developing an unwanted behavior such as aggression. So aggression doesn't develop in puppies yet. Uh, it's not there unless you support your dogs or your puppies' behaviors, then it will lead to aggression. Aggression is the last uh, step, last part of um all the bad behaviors that the puppy has uh, experienced so therefore it becomes aggression so if it's biting you it's just because puppies tend to play bite with other puppies dogs in general when they play if you watch dogs playing together let me see if i can show you something just give me a minute I'll find something. So if you watch dogs playing together, you'll see that they're biting each other, right? They will bite each other and that is a normal behavior. I'm looking for a video that I can show you guys. Um, so if you, if you watch this, you know, they're biting each other, right? If you watch these two playing together, they're actually biting each other. And biting and mouthing and, uh, you know, doing things together, the, using their mouth is a very natural, normal behavior. So that, that is something that puppies will do with you. If you play, a, a human plays with a dog, that's what happens. They will bite you because they are, that kind of creatures that they do bite each other and they want to uh, practice that behavior. It's a natural behavior. They want to do it with their own kind, hopefully. But if you don't provide their own kind, they will practice it with you. And unfortunately, I know in this day and age, it's the thing, crazy thing that is going on around. We don't have the opportunity to allow our puppies or our dogs to play with other puppies or dogs. Therefore, what happens is they, you need to be that other playmate. So when you are the playmate, they will bite you, they will practice those behaviors on you. So a true toy is a good idea to produce uh, or don't play games that you need to use your hand or your body, instead play fetch. You know, I, I think I sent you a game, uh, a video of me playing a fetch game with my dog practice those uh, commands sit stay calm is a great game to teach practice and have fun playing fetch at the same time so that's that's the that's the thing you know you just focus on those uh, monk should it has a question. Do you know about German Shepherds? Is it good to be a pet as uh, at the house? Yes. Uh, interesting question. I can explain a little bit more. So there were there are several types of German Shepherds. Uh, I think there are at least three or four types of German Shepherds. One of them, you know, the black ones, for example, the black or white, no, the white ones are not genetically bred properly. 
they're they're working type of German Shepherd dogs and they are pet German Shepherd dogs. Depends on what which one you select. You have to ask the breeder. You have to select the breeder that breeds um, pet German Shepherds or working German Shepherds. So working German Shepherds are ideal for uh, you know police work. Uh, you know army they work in the army as well but pet german shepherds are ideal for pets so you have to be selecting the breeder and ask the breeder if their german shepherd is a pet breed uh, pet german shepherd or working german shepherd if you want a pet german shepherd and this is one of the common mistakes that dog owners or dog lovers do they like the way German Shepherd looks. Let me they like the way German Shepherd looks, right? That's the this is uh, for example, an example, right? This is a, a German Shepherd that is pet German Shepherd, right? Uh, it's not I, I, you can tell it's not a working German Shepherd uh, because it's been raised uh, to so this is this is a pet German Shepherd you can tell you know from their personality their from their uh, demeanor you can tell it's a pet German Shepherd uh, so miss more, many dog lovers they fall in love with this look with this breed and they just go ahead and get the German Shepherd breed and they bring the wrong German Shepherd to their home. They don't realize that there are several types of German Shepherds. There's a pet German Shepherd, there's working German Shepherd, there is uh, also white German Shepherd, which I, which I don't recommend to use to have them. They're kind of a mixed, mixed breed and uh, they're not ideal breeds. Uh, to have anyways, uh, lots of genetic problems in there in them. So yeah, I would consider uh, thinking that way. So once again, I want to remind you if you enjoying the content that you're getting in this channel and you want to support the channel to continue on providing and producing quality content like you're getting in this channel, Make sure to support the channel by uh, using the super chat. And also, if you want to get your uh, questions super fast answered, use the super chat option and let me know and uh, I will answer it right away. So uh, we have Nash. So how do how to do give potty training for five months old beagle puppy. Uh, so if you go to the chat area, I shared a, a video, which it's called uh, house training. I think I called it house training. Uh, let me see. Uh, it's called house training, but what I'll do, I'll share it with you anyways. Um, just watch this video and um, learn. Uh, a five months old beagle puppy, I'm going to call it potty training. The video is called potty training and it's in the chat area now, the link for this video. Go ahead and watch that. Uh, a five months old beagle puppy, you still have an opportunity to uh, potty training. Christian Ortiz, hopefully this is not the real Cristiano. <laughs> uh, well, no, that's um, Messi, that's Messi, I got confused. Uh, uh, I'm a soccer fan, football fan, not soccer, football. Football is the real name, football fan, big football fan, and I'm missing the games uh, due to what's happening in the world. Christian is asking, what's the solution to dogs smelling kind of bad? <clears throat> the solution uh, 
The solution for that is diet. I would say 90% of the solution would be diet. 10% would be just washing your dog. <laughs> they do get, they do release oils in their skin and they do get, uh, they do release body odor. But the body odor usually comes from, uh, is a result of, the, of their diet. So what you feed will determine how they will smell, believe it or not. If you're feeding kibble or dry food, because it has a lot of toxins, a lot of, it's a highly processed food for dogs, and it's, it has a lot of chemicals and things that they don't sit well f with dogs. What happens is it, it causes a lot of complication in the complications in their system and becomes those, they become toxins in their body. And what you're smelling is a smell of toxins rather than body odor or toxins plus body odor. So the toxins are what are causing a dog to have bad odor. And the toxins are because of the food that you are feeding your dog. So if you want to get rid of the odor and the, those toxins, I definitely suggest you to feed uh, fresh food or a raw diet. So you have to change the diet. You have to stop feeding kibble or dry food and start feeding good, clean, fresh food. Okay. Nash is asking, my Luna is so naughty, what are ways to control, sir? Uh, Luna is a very common name for naughty dogs, lunatics, right? Uh, again, the reason it's naughty is because you're not providing your dogs daily five essential needs. Where is it? There it is. If you don't provide your dogs daily five essential needs, what happens is, uh, your dog is going to give you that attitude, give you that uh, behavior, those behaviors that translates to you as naughty. And therefore, what happens is you misunderstand your dog. So when you misunderstand your dog, you think that they're doing these things to piss you off and they're naughty. They're not naughty. They're just not getting their daily five essential needs, which are exercise training socialization care and affection if you don't provide these five things for your puppy or your dog they will give you that behavior uh, she's biting me even she has some toys wiser the reason that happens is because um, okay um, I just noticed something. Uh, she's biting me every, even she has some toys. You know, providing toys is not the only solution. You have to provide daily five essential. Yes, toys is part of it, part of the solutions, but it's not the only solution. Again, you can't just, you know, toys are band-aid solution. What that means is you're just uh, covering that situation or that problem for time being you're not dealing with it with completely right so what happens is it becomes uh, a part of the solution and one you know just having toys and providing toys for a dog or uh, just giving a toy to a kid it doesn't mean that they will leave you alone right you have to provide a lot of things and those things are exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection. Life of Duffy is saying thank you. You are welcome. Uh, Samir uh, is asking, hi, my beagle who's three months old has recently started peeing inside of the house. I punish him by putting him outside alone for 10 minutes with a leash on. Is that right? If not, what should I do? I'm not sure if you're just attaching the leash and putting the dog outside and hoping that he will learn. No, you have to take the puppy out, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, 
punishing the dog and letting it outside, first of all, is not the way. Leaving it outside for 10 minutes, that doesn't solve the problem. At three months old, you have to take it out every two hours, preferably before they do the accident, they have the accident. So what I want you to do is figure out, okay, is having accidents at two o'clock, for example, and then has the next accident at four o'clock, and then the next accident is about six o'clock, and then has another accident at 8 o'clock. So you figure out, okay, that means every two hours needs to go out. So for the next day or two, you just observe. Don't punish the puppy or anything. Just observe when it's going. Whether you take it outside or does it inside, just mark the time that is doing it. And come up with a way that you can figure out, okay, it's every two hours, every three hours, every one hour and take the puppy out, let's say, let's say if it's every two hours, you to take it out before two hours. So you don't let the puppy to have accidents in the house. You put the leash on, you take the puppy out for a five, 10 minute walk, let do its business outside, bring it back home. If it doesn't do outside, when you bring it back home, keep it on the leash attached to you or near you, keep the puppy near you, keep the puppy in a crate, keep the puppy under sur surveillance, keep an eye on it, uh, and we, uh, try 10 minutes later, take it out 10 minutes later. If it does it, does it. So you have to go through process of po potty training. I shared a link in the, in the chat area, go ahead and watch that, and that will help you as well. Nash, Luna is biting her leashes and almost makes it as as threads, whether she's planning to escape. <laughs> uh, again, the, the leash biting is a sign, okay? It's a sign and it's a signal that it's, it's stressed. All, that's all I want you to understand. When your dog is misbehaving, when your puppy is misbehaving and is doing something, that is stressing you and it's making you angry, it's make, making you piss off, it's a sign, it's a signal that your dog is stressed. Why is it that your dog is stressed? Because you're not providing your dog's daily five essential needs on in this order, exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection, okay? That's the reason. Critical th thinker is in the house. Hi, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Thank you for being here. Jennifer is saying thank you. Uh, Tavlin, is it so hard to train beagles? Can you give me a few tips to make it easy? My beagle is also aggressive. Um, it is not hard to train beagles. Uh, it's, it's, I would say, you know, I don't want to say it's harder or it's challenging. It's just, it's a different level. Just think of it this way. Let's say you're playing a game, you know, uh, um, uh, any game, right? You start with level one and then level two, and then you go to level two and three, four, five, six, seven, right? So Beagle is level level three or four. It's not level one, obviously. It's le not level two either. It's level three. It's just a different level. It, it's not that it's impossible or it's hard. It's just that you have to have level one and two done in order to get level three. Now, how do you train a beagle and go through levels one, two, three? Is you work a little bit harder, train a little bit harder train a little bit longer, that's all, right? So if you wanna learn how to train your beagle, so what are you gonna do? Let me show you. I'm gonna go to my channel, right? And you're gonna go to playlist, you're gonna click on playlist, 
and you're gonna go and watch all these videos how to train beagles without the use of treats you're gonna watch these when you're done with those you're gonna come back and you're gonna start train watching um, uh these ones hold on let me show you which one you're gonna watch next beagle puppy training how to train a beagle puppy okay you're gonna watch these as well okay so you're gonna watch all these videos to learn how to train a beagle right worst case scenario if you don't get most if you still have problems you still need help go to my website sorrowdogtraining.com go to online courses and select one of the courses whichever that you think is the right one i have puppy training 101 i have naked dog training any of these will do pick one of these and register and get started okay so you have few things you have a little bit more work to to do than regular dog owners. It's not that it's hard. Justine, how long should I exercise my nine weeks old beagle per day? A nine weeks old should get four uh, exercise sessions for 15 minutes at a time. Each one should be 15 minutes and you should do four or maybe five depending on how you feel and how your puppy's energy level is. If four is not enough, make it five. Is five if five is too much, make it four or make it three. Just adjust it anyway. So what I want you to do is not to give one one hour exercise and that's it for the day. You have to break it down to four or five short training uh, exercise sessions. And then those exercises can be either taking the puppy for a walk, uh, playing with the puppy, um, allowing the puppy to play with other dogs, um, allowing the puppy with, to play with toys, exercise, anything can become exercise. Uh, so yeah, that would be the answer. Nash, Luna is always wants to bet bite or play with my hair on my hair band why is it is she communicating something to me sir yes it's communicating again that it's not getting its daily five essential needs that's what is communicating to you okay what kind of exercises do you suggest for beagles so yeah i just mentioned to you um walking the beagle, uh, playing with the beagle, allowing the beagle puppy to play with other puppies or dogs, playing with toys, anything like that. Critical thinker, I have two questions today. My nine months old resources, guards, toys, footballs, and now me. <laughs> uh, uh, let me ask, uh, um, let me answer the first one first. So if it's resourcing, resource guarding, toys and foods and balls and now you is because you haven't, you haven't taught your dog good and bad, yes and no, unwanted, wanted, you haven't taught your your dog hasn't learned that life living with humans in general life has both negative and positive so what has happened here is your dog has learned that probably life is negative this is mine i am everything me 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 this is mine your mind this food is mine, this football is mine, these toys are mine. It's things about me, me, me. Because me has become the most important part of life. It's very, I think in a way you can say, say that it's very selfish and very self-centered. 
what happens when we uh, allow a dog to be self-centered, uh, like be selfish, what happens is they, they think that that's how life should be. And they only focus on that. And when they focus on that only, they forget everything else about life. So what happens is, is here is not a dog has to be, you have to understand a dog has to be um, getting cues and information from a human. If it doesn't get those information from a human, then it becomes uh, uh, the only thing that they can do is to come up with their own uh, solutions and ideas. And this is one of those solutions, right? So if if a dog is not getting cues from human, that means you need to work on helping this dog to get cues from you. You have to let a dog to get cues from human. I, you have to understand and you have to accept and you have to commit. A dog, has to get information and has to be told by human what to do, how to do, how, how much to do, how long to do, all these things. You have to give all this information to your dog. Is your duty, is your task, is your uh, commitment that you signed uh, a contract with your dog that you will do this. If you don't do it, that means you're not committed to your dog. That means you're just focused on your dog's care and affection. You forgot that you need to provide all these things for your dog. So a trained dog wouldn't behave like that. A dog who's been provided proper amount of exercise, proper amount of socialization, care and affection in this order wouldn't behave like that. You forgot to provide these for your dog. So it's your duty. Uh, it's not that I'm saying you're, you need to be dictator to your dog, but it's our job to do this to our dogs. We are the ones who go and bring a dog to our homes. It's not vice versa. They don't select you. The, your dog didn't select you. You selected your dog. So it's your job to give it what it needs and you need to provide them on daily basis and every day. And when a dog is resource guarding and is doing things like that, that's a clear sign that you have, you have a, a disconnected communication relationship with your dog. So you need to repair that. And the only way that you can repair that is by providing daily five essential needs including training. Uh, and your second question is, my beagle is three years old, is scared of thunderstorms. I live in Florida. This happens daily here. I got her a thunder vest. It helps a lot. Also gives her, give, I give her CBD oil. She won't go outside or walk, walks after. Yeah, that's one of the unfortunate things, you know, if, an animal in nature was reactive to thunderstorms, that's what they would do. They would go and hide. And that is normal in a way to behave that way. It is scary. Imagine you experiencing thunderstorms. It is scary in a way. I understand, you have to understand that it is scary. It is something that they will react. So what you want to do is not support for sake, you know, I don't want you to say, yes, go ahead and do that. I agree with that. But say, you know what, here's another option. So you're providing thunder shirts, you're providing CBD oil, uh, you know, just have the dog on a leash by you and go through this process together. Let it know that Yes, it does bother me too, but I don't panic. You should be a good example for your dog. So that would be my suggestion. Don't in reinforce or inf enforce your dog to 
not react to it. It is, it is possible. It is impossible. We have to each individual, each person, each dog has certain characteristics. I am afraid of heights. My wife, she doesn't care about heights. Just because I'm afraid of hikes, heights doesn't mean that I'm a bad person or I am unusual or I'm bad or I'm uh, defective. It just, but in other sections, I'm great, right? In other parts, I'm great, right? So that's the thing that I want you to focus on. And I saying, how can I be training my beagle? He's three years old. I have him since a year and a half. He must walk on a leash because he is all the time hunting. How can I train him to walk without leash? So in order to improve the walk and get a beagle to walk on a, off leash, you have to go through the process of teaching the basics that your beagle has to have the basic commands, solid basic obedience. You know, sit, stay, calm, heal, down, stand. All this has to be solid, right? So you have to start there. Go back to basics. Teach the basics. Let the dog learn exactly what these things are. Second, you work on your beagle on these commands and walking properly on a leash for about a year or six, six months to a year on a leash. And then after a, a year or so, you know, six months or a, year, or a year, you start introducing long leash. You practice everything and good walking etiquettes and good walking uh, form for, a, uh, for another maybe half a year or maybe less depending on each dog on a long leash and then you go to off leash. So it takes a long time for a beagle especially to go from leash walk to off leash walk. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen in a few months. It happens through years, right? I'm a dog trainer and I train my beagles to walk off leash. It takes me a few months takes me six months to a year to get to that result. And I'm a dog trainer. It's not that I am um, I'm doing, I'm taking my time. It just takes time, right? You can't, uh, you can't ask a, 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 a kid, 16 year old or 18 year old to all of a sudden start driving, right? Driving a car, right? You have to teach them. You have, you have to teach them the laws, the the bylaws of city driving and roads and safety and all that. And then they have to learn the mechanical part of driving, for example. And then they have to put all this information into action of learning how to focus on driving and all these things that are happening. And then after a few years, you see that they're actually driving properly. That's why, for example, in Canada and especially in Vancouver, we have like levels of driving. We have new drivers, learner, and then new driver, and then the new. It's a new driver for a few years until it becomes a regular driver because you have to have the experience of driving. In your case, it, the dog has to have the basics of walking properly on a leash and then learning how to walk off leash and then showing to you that, yes, I'm capable of walking off leash properly and then you off leash. So it takes a long time. It's a process that you have to go. Great question. And I have videos on my channel as well. If you want to improve uh, the, the walking, uh, go to my channel. Again, go to uh, playlist. And uh, the playlist that I suggest you to watch is this one. Uh, before, uh, uh, how to walk your dog uh, on a on a leash uh, on a leash. This one, okay. So that's the one that I want you to watch. Um, this one, okay. I keep getting this commercial, but that's the one you're gonna watch, okay. All right, where are we? <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Tavlin is asking, how can I understand that the beagle I brought is a true breed? The the best way that to figure out is is a DNA test. Um, I did it myself. Um, let me see. I did a DNA test for my beagle. Um, let me see if I can show you this. Uh, and you were wondering what kind of mixed breed Fanny is. So we did a DNA test and we got the results now. Let's find out what mixed breed Annie is. So based on the DNA test results, Annie is 25% cough. That is surprising. So based on the DNA test results, there are six mixed breeds in Annie, plus a group mix of breeds. So the dominant breed in Annie is cough, which is 25% of the breed. The rest, Basset Hound, Beagle, Boxer, Cocker Spaniel, and Labrador Retriever are 12.5% each. So that's what I did. I used the uh, Panel Wisdom. I think it's called Panel Wisdom. Uh, let me see. Yeah, Wisdom Panel. So that's the one. Do you see that? Wisdom Panel. That's how you can do. It's basically what you do is uh, go to their website, uh, register, and they will send you a package. And all you have to do is uh, swap the inside the, of the your beagle's uh, mouth uh, like that, and just send it. Uh, put put it back in the box and send it back and uh, they will determine if your dog is pure beagle or not. That's what I did. Arjun, uh, Rahul, you can use cottage cheese and egg whites if your beagle is about three, four months for homemade treats. I don't use them that much, but when I have to, they do come in handy. Uh, it's, it, Arjun, it's a good tip. But one thing I want you to understand, even though you're, uh, I know you're giving Raul a tip, but here's my, my two cents in there. Uh, cottage cheese and uh, cottage cheese in general is not a natural diet for dogs. It's not something that it sits well with them. It's not part of their diet. So I wouldn't really suggest cottage cheese. Egg whites, eggs are okay. Um, but cheese is something that is not ideal for dogs. It's good for cows. It's not even good for humans. It's good for cows. It's, that's what it's made for, and that's what it's good for, for cows, not for dog, dogs. Just to FYI. Yeah, bread is not good. Okay, so let's go to this question. Okay, there's tons of questions. Nash, okay, so remember, if you want your questions to be answered right away, uh, make sure to use the super chat option. Uh, otherwise, I'll be answering questions that comes as, it, as they come, and I'll try, I do my best to answer them all. Uh, my Luna is barking if I'm away from her eyesight. I'm so worried if I go to work after lockdown, please suggest me what to do to make her peace, even in my absence. Yeah, this is a this is a problem. Yes, I know. Uh, especially now that we are spending a lot of time with our dogs, we're we're getting really attached to our dogs. And one of the things that you have to understand that dogs have been uh, bred and designed by humans for humans to live 
with humans. We wanted them to live with us, live and work with us and for us 24 seven. So it's a very natural thing for dogs to be attached to us. And when we detach ourselves, it's very unnatural for dogs. They don't understand it. They don't get it. They think that we're punishing them. The best way to punish a dog is detaching yourself. That's the worst thing that you can do to a dog is detaching yourself or <clears throat> letting the dog home alone. That is the worst thing that you can do. That That is like that dog thinks that is being punished and is being left to death. That's what they do in nature. In the wild, uh, dogs, dog type animals, um, canines, uh, they do, if, if the member of, of that group and that pack is not ideal for that group, that group is gonna leave that dog behind. And if a dog is left behind, that is, that is worst thing that you can they can get because that means they can't survive they will die and out of hunger other animals are going to attack them so it's the worst thing that they can do or they can get to be alone so therefore that's why you will see that most canine uh, dogs animals they they're always living in a pack because pack means security safety and survival so for a dog to be left home alone or uh, be left alone in general is, is like punishment. It's like death. It's that level. It's in their instinct. It's, it's in their, uh, in, in their uh, being uh, instinct. Yeah. Uh, they don't like to be alone. So to teach your dog to be left alone is something that you have to teach it. It's, it's something that they have to learn and get comfortable with it. So it starts with teaching your dog the basics. Sit, stay calm, heel, stand down. These are the basics you have to teach. So one of the commands in this group is stay. So you teach the dog to stay. Stay is uh, a basic command that we teach our dogs to uh, learn that we can the, the dog can stay uh, while we are in front of them and we can say stay and they stay for five minutes maximum right five to ten minutes and then after we teach them the stay we have to teach them wait command wait command is different than stay stay you're invisible, you're visible to your dog in front of your dog, you're in front of your dog and you're waiting five, 10 minutes, uh, staying there. Whereas wait, you're not visible to your dog and your, your dog is staying there uh, or waiting for you 10 minutes up to four hours, okay? So you're teaching the dog to tolerate not being around you or you not being around them. But that is a process that you have to teach and train your dog. It takes months for them to learn. It's a good time to start training now before you uh, go back to work, go back to your life, normal life. So start training now. If you wanna learn those and learn what to do and how to train, join my uh, uh, naked dog training course that's where you learn all these things you know basic obedience stay weight walking all kinds of things you learn that start training your dog now before it's too late they have to learn how to tolerate uh, being left home alone so that's that's something that you should start doing now training uh, and uh, teaching, you know, they have to learn. And the other thing that you have to understand is dogs can be just left home alone more than four hours. You need to, if it's more than four hours and you're going to work for eight, nine, 10 hours a day, you need to consider also coming with different solution of somebody else taking care of your dog or puppy, which you have to either have the option of, uh, hiring a pet sitter 
or hiring a dog walker to come and walk your dog uh, once or twice a day while you're at work or taking your dog or sending your dog to a doggy daycare. So those, those would be my uh, solutions. Arjun is asking, can you recommend ways on how can we prevent separation anxiety? Dogs are getting used to seeing their owners home because of the lockdown here in India. Don't know what will happen when we go to work. I just explained and talked about that. So that's, there's the answer. Critical thinker says your insight and knowledge is appreciated. You are very welcome. Thank you for that comment. So Sara, hope you are well. Always nice to catch you live. You're a wonderful man. Thank you for your feedback. Uh, I need to make something to eat. <laughs> Be listening. Infinite gratitude, sorrows, and everyone, everyone here. Have a great day. Great. Yes. Thank you for listening and watching. Yeah, Paisley, would you suggest a Beagle is good breed first-time pet owners? Uh, for a first-time pet owner, I would say it's a little bit challenging. Uh, uh, it's not one of, It's not that you're going to have a nightmare in your hand, but it's a little bit, it's going to be a challenge. Um, actually, I posted two videos uh, in the past two weeks. I have posted two videos that I go through good and bad of beagles, right? Um, there are many good things about having a beagle. There are many bad things also uh, about having a beagle. It's something that I would say it all depends on your lifestyle. It depends on what you, uh, how you, your lifestyle is. So I did a video. My name is Sarah. I'm a dog trainer, also coach dog owner. So if you're thinking about getting a beagle, there are a few things that you have to learn and understand. And I hope by watching this video, you have a better idea and understanding of what you are about to get. Beagles are not ideal dogs for first time dog owners. That's because there are so many special breed characteristics in them that it is overwhelming for first time dog owners. Beagles are high energy breed of dog. What that means is they have been bred for working, for hunting, hunting rabbits, and the hunt for them is a game, which brings me to the next point. Beagles are always ready to play and explore and be active. So therefore, many beagle owners deal with many behavioral issues of a beagle. In a way, they develop unwanted behaviors. So in the past month, I have been asking many beagle owners, over 500 beagle owners, to tell me what is the worst thing about owning a beagle. These are beagle owners, and they have shared their ideas and thoughts about owning a beagle. So let's get started and going through this list, starting with number. So there it is. Um, there's the video. Uh, I shared with you 10 list, 10 reasons uh, of worst thing of having a dog, have a beagle. So if you want to watch this video, um, I'll share it in the in the in the chat area. Go ahead and watch this video, the entire video, and then make your choice. Make that decision whether it's a good dog to have uh, as a first time owner or not. Where were we? Prasun, how to prepare the flat for a one-month-old beagle? Uh, I think you're British and you're asking flat in the in, in your your part. It's the apartment or the house or living area. Um, what you do is you puppy-proof the environment, right? Uh, what that means is you don't. Uh, you don't give an opportunity or, or an area or stuff that puppy can get into or put in his mouth uh, and it becomes a safety issue. So if 
you're going to have a bigger puppy, uh, you make sure that you have crate, uh, expand, exp expand is basically uh, creating an em environment that you're dedicating to the puppy or a room that you can dedicate to a puppy. Don't let the puppy to be roaming around uh, the, the apartment freely. In the first few months, you don't want to allow that. Uh, every few weeks or so, you want to put it on leash and introduce the house uh, in, con in controlled environment. Um, but um, make sure it's like, you know, basically when you have kids, kid proof the house, you do puppy proof the house, basically. Critical thinker, I don't, I didn't know what cutting was either. The question scared me at first. Tie for, <laughs> thank you for clarification. Uh, yeah, I, I, that was. <laughs> uh, Jasmine Diol, I have a beagle and recently bought a Doberman. And after a few weeks, when my beagle started to try biting me after I pampered the Doberman, and then come to him, please give me a solution. So when you have, a, so when you, you had a beagle and then you, you got the Doberman and the beagle is starting to be uh, reactive. That is common because what happens is you brought another dog to your beagle's life. Your beagle was having a good time, was enjoying all the uh, all the attention, and then you brought another dog, another doby, so it stresses your um, your beagle. So what happens is, what I want you to do is have uh, have your beagle on a leash, right, uh, and train it in a way. Go back to basic, train the basics. Have your beagle most of the time on a leash and let the Doberman, uh, you know, walk around and do its things. And and one always, either the beagle or Doby, one always for time being, a limited time have to be on the control on a leash. Uh, the reason I suggest you to do that is because you have to have control over one dog in order to allow the other dog to learn. You can't have two uh, uncontrolled dogs and try to communicate to them both. You have to have one of them on a leash so you have control over them and then uh, let the other one learn something from you. So what I would basically suggest to do in general is make sure that uh, you have control over one dog always. Arjun is saying, for the person who is asking about German Shepherd, go for a saddle color, but the ultimately, uh, da, da, da. go ahead and, and do that. Critical thinker, my neighbors got a German Shepherd puppy after almost two years, got rid of her, then brought home two English Bulldogs, then got rid of one. When I asked, they said they were too active, broke my heart. Yes, that's the thing, you know. One of the things that you have to understand, not all dogs are ideal for humans and not all humans are ideal for dogs. You have to find and um, match with the right dog. Otherwise, you're ruining both lives. Figo does eat, eat a lot from what's fallen on the floor. How do I stop picking up stuff from the floor? First of all, don't let it, this, this is something we call it the human, human humans have to uh, control themselves. When you have a puppy, especially when you have a puppy, you have to be really careful about how you're living, how, what are you doing and how you're not doing things. First of all, don't drop, drop foods. Don't create an opportunity. Be careful about what you're doing, where you're eating. Maybe the food area, maybe the area that you're eating your food should be blocked from the beagle puppy. You shouldn't let your beagle puppy in that area or vice versa. And the human has to be controlling. Human has to be in that uh, state of mind and be aware that there's a puppy. So we shouldn't be making mistakes, first of all. 
And if a puppy is picking up stuff on the floor and you want it to stop, you have to teach it the no command, which is I use it for uh, all the occasions. I teach my dog no. Uh, if you want to learn how to teach no to your dog uh, or your puppy, uh, I have a video in my channel. Um, I'll call it correct your beagle. Okay, I'll call this video correct your beagle. And you're going to watch. Managing blood. And you're going to watch this video. It's in the chat area. Okay, so watch that. Unfortunately, people don't invest time and consistency with puppies and dogs. They need calm, guidance. It's all new to them. Patience and balance a must. They are turned into our energy. Yes. Dogs response, respond to our stress and energy. Yes. What if you were punished for using the bathroom? My dogs, I take out to relieve themselves every hour. Praise them when they, they, they go to the bathroom outside. Good pee, 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 or poo outside. Yes, good boy, girl. What if you were punished for using the bathroom? Uh, I don't understand the question. They learn first, and we'll let you know after some training that they, if not home, to let them out every hour, just give them extra outside time. We leave the training to sorrows. You know, okay, I think I know what you mean. When you are correcting your puppy, uh, it, it re responds or reacts. I think one of the things is that whenever your puppy is having accidents, you better not punish or correct your puppy or your dog. It is already too late. The damage is done. You don't want to correct the dog at that situation and that moment. You, what you want to do is just make sure that that uh, mistake doesn't happen again. Brian is saying, hi, Sarah. Do you have any tips for in integrating a beagle puppy into a home with two senior cats? Thanks. Um, Good question. Uh, beagle puppy to senior cats. Usually, beagles are going to be easy to integrate uh, to anything. They like all the animals, the, all the other pets and things. It should be easy, unless this beagle puppy had a bad experience or bad uh, uh, be it didn't work out with a cat. If previously there was a cat problem. But overall, they will get used to the cat, unless the cats don't accept, accept the puppy. Cats are different animals. They are very selfish, you know. <laughs> they, they do either accept you or not. So it all depends on the cats as well. Uh, Let me see. Okay, I think I answered, I got to answer all most of the questions. If there is any leftover questions, uh, I will uh, answer them after the show. Go ahead and ask, ask those questions in the comments area and I will read them and I will answer them. Uh, remember, you can always support the channel with Super Chat next from next time. Remember that next, uh, next week when we come on live, remember that uh, you can support the channel by Super Chat. So hopefully we'll get that going. Uh, if you have any questions, remaining questions, ask me after the show uh, and I will read. I read all the questions and I answer them. Um, if you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon as well. Um, and make sure that you're 
choosing all notification when, when you're selecting the bell icon. Uh, so you will get notified as soon as I go live or I post a new video. Hopefully you enjoyed this live show. Hopefully your questions were answered and hopefully you got most of this show. Um, if you could help me with the channel and like and share the video, like the channel, uh, share the channel with all your dog friends and dog uh, lovers and make sure that you are helping the channel to grow faster. And with that, you're going to be able to support the channel as well. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the show. And until next time, have fun with your dog.